Hello everyone, this is Yuri's Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Legendary Radius Mod Trivia campaign. We pick things up for episode 16 from turn 56 in the harvest season of 201. So, this is actually going to be our last episode. I have one last thing I want to do, and that is to showcase this repeating crossbowman army. So I'm going to get them moving. And the battle that we have for them can either be this one, or this one. Um, probably this one, just so that we can wipe out Utuku's faction. It'll take us a few turns to get there, but it should be fine. Um, we will just simply ambush this group. They really have really no hope of taking us out. I guess I'll come cut them off here as well. We don't need to go north anymore. And then we'll complete our encirclement because this river he can only get through here so this is the only spot we need to hold him he's trapped he's trapped right here and this one I, I it doesn't matter he can bump into any settlement would kill him that way as for our level up and everything we'll grab a huh I'll take reach and as we progress in this episode, at the end, uh, I want to talk about the mod. I want to talk about the Radius mod. I also want to talk about Record Mo for a little bit, uh, sort of as a review for both content. Um, we are probably not going to touch too many buildings. I think most of them are full build, or at least our definition of full build. And the food, uh, food became ridiculous here because we picked up some farmlands here, which surprisingly... How do we have so much food all of a sudden? I'm confused. Huh. Liverpool has... Boss giving us 39. How? Because we focus food on this? 7... 4... Seven, eight. Ah, uh, okay. I feel like this might have been modified a little bit because actually, no, maybe it's this is the same way. It, the, the values change, but I think maybe it's the same thing. I don't remember if this is food production just from farming or also from fishing. And we also sent the assignment on one of the locations, not even here. Basi has an assignment, right? Yeah. 28. Okay, so we do have quite a bit of food. We could go tall in places we want to. Um, but like I said, I really just want to showcase that army in particular. They're just going to hang out here. Over here, chase down the rebels. Did they summon anyone new with items? It appears so. This time they're dead. Looks like they're gone. And we did catch him. I can release and still get the item. Now that's a nice touch. That's a good thing from the mod. I think that's a nice thing. We already got him. We can strip him before releasing him. I want to know if level 4's... I think it is, right? We checked. It is. He can get a full stack as well. Probably not going to have time to use you, so we're not going to really get some action here. Yeah, we're just going to continue here spy-wise. Also, don't think we'll be grabbing anyone unique. Nobody is out of characters that's actually unique because Drownface ditched him. Ganning's still there, but he's not really working for him. He's working for me. Uh, don't draw a pickup. Anyone? Nope. So we can also extract him as well. Everyone coming home might cause a satisfaction issue once they do arrive. I don't know if this carryover effect is from the mod or not. I have people tell me different things because I have not noticed this before. There's people who tells me that this used to be a problem in the base game and they fixed it where it's no longer carried over. And some people claim that it is a carryover effect anyways, and maybe just the base game is 10 points, so it's not that noticeable. Whereas here it's 15 points, so it's hitting really hard. 
might be true. Um, but regardless, the 15 point change is also something we'll take, uh, talk about later on. Might as well buy a chest. No point letting it overflow. Okay. No, oh, High Empire is finally destroyed. Anyone coming to me? Aww. Oh. Another burn officer who's willing to sp Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He might be a spy, but I might just grab him regardless. It's like, make it three for three. Anyways, uh, we're not going to have time to really utilize them. Sell him over. He's on March. It's a little bit risky in case he has a stack. I assume he would have a stack. Yeah, he has some something here. There's another army behind. He's also chosen to go this way. Interesting. So I'll come here and choke this off. He'll stay in ambush. I'll pick him off first. Oh, they're running away. It's no fun. All right, get a pick of reform. Um, corruption reduction. So at the end of the tree, right, we're four reforms deep. It's three turns. It's still pretty fast. And some of the earlier ones were like one turns or two turn. All right, we do have. A decent amount of food. Jiao Zhi. Mm. Jiang Yang has good potential. Yeah, we should get the spice one. Go for probably Market Wharf. Uh, actually, I'm not sure because there is no additional, except for the. Yeah, except for this. Labor, actually? Yeah. Keep forgetting that in Radius, labor makes you money. And looks like we have plenty of cash left to keep building. And we'll go market worth this time. I'm gonna go for... The non... Oh, no, no, no. The non-spy variant here. Still reform locked. All the spies are back. Let's take a peek at Gong Sun Zan's faction. Zhao Yun should be there. Very happy. Lu Zhi still alive. Why didn't he live that long in our campaign? Xun Yu went to him. Plus 30 defense. Are you kidding me? Now it's still plus 5. Hmm, who might have good characters? Tao Tian. Actually, Liu Bao probably have some interesting characters. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, just those two. And still very happy. They have a minus 30 recent event somehow. I didn't do anything. He must have recruited someone that we used the spy action on and they ditched and went to his faction. It's causing the same issue for them as for us. Lady Me is still here. Negative. Oh, only 66 points. That's a pretty interesting armor there. And we have the wife too. Wow, all these spy defenses are insane. Ooh. Okay, we'll let them run into us and get themselves killed. We already did the building rush. And we actually kind of short on money now. So let's just continue. Alright, we got them in the ambush and we'll just delegate it. Oh! Fine, we'll delegate this way. It's weird how you unite battle and you do worse. Doesn't make a lot of sense. 
Our trebuchet got wiped. Alrighty. Uh, Lady Wu's forces actually helped us wipe out one army over here. Wait, who, who got wiped? Zhang Chao? Oh, okay. I mean, it was a siege battle, so I can see how the siege weapon gets wiped. Oh, we end up not picking these two and went for these two. Oh, it's fine. They're all glowing. It's kind of confusing which one's actually ready. Utugu was on the field himself. We get one more chance to maybe peel off that bow. Just to make sure we can delegate this one, we'll use both armies. There we go. He's on march. This will certainly do him in. Level 9 with patience. Can't really ask for that much higher capture chance. I mean, one more level difference. Oh, we also do have a shaman item that we didn't use. Forgot about that. And we forgot to check these for the plus one army ones. Those are really nice, but these are not that nice. Because with those, you can basically reach infinite army. All right, so this is the showcase. This is the only fight that I really wanted to fight right here to test out basically what I call machine gun group and uh, crushing defeat. Yeah, right. Let's go. Alrighty, as we prepare for the fight, We'll start our review of the Radius mod. Um, first off, Team Radius have been very generous in terms of reaching out to me. Um, not sponsored by them or anything, there's no payment going on, but they have emailed me quite a few times recommending their mod to me to use, and they've been, you know, big modders in the Total War community for a long time. Uh, for those of you who've been playing Total War games for a while or play other games like, you know, whether it's um, Rome, Shogun, uh, Warhammer, Team Radius uh, makes mod for all of them, so uh, they've been an active member of the community for a while, and I definitely heard of them before. Uh, for those of you who follow the channel for a long time, I am not the type that like to use mods. I prefer to play the game in its vanilla form whenever possible, mainly because I just believe that's the way the developers try to balance it, and any sort of attempt at changing it. Um, either makes the game artificially more difficult or artificially too easy. And in this case, it's definitely the latter. So a lot of people, you know, think that Radius makes the battle harder because the AI can recruit so many armies and they do recruit so many armies. But my argument is that it doesn't make it any harder, right? If you are struggling at beating AI's armies in terms like you know, one-on-one -on -one combat, right? It very rarely do you see the AI group two or three armies together to fight you. It might happen, but so far, most of this campaign has been one-on-one -on -one army fights. They recruit better units for sure, but if you know how to play the game in terms of the, the battle parts well, you shouldn't struggle. If you can beat one army, like the idea is, you can beat all the armies. So the fact that they have 20 armies for you to fight rather than five armies, doesn't make the game any more difficult. It just makes the game longer, right? Longer than what it needs to be. When you know you can beat a faction down, when your armies are rolling into their territories and beating their armies, beating a new army every turn doesn't make the experience more difficult. It, it just basically makes it a longer experience. That's my opinion on it. So I don't think Radius makes any battles more difficult. Now we're struggling with that tower. Um, it does add a lot of units. I think this is something that Radius is known for in all the games. And I mean, for games like Three Kingdoms, I, I don't know if you need this many units, especially the way they add unit is they take assets from, oh my God, let's just go for that tower. They take assets from existing units, right? We can, we can even tell what piece of which comes from what. This is Utugu's shield and they give the, the saber from one of the Nama infantry, and they pull the horses from like cataphracts, and they place that all together. Uh, they probably use some Tiger Slinger helmet model for the head, and now it's a new unit, and we, you know, adjust some of the numbers, like by a little bit. It's not even massive adjustment to numbers. Um, and then you call it a new unit, which I feel like it's, it's not really a new unit, right? 
I, I don't feel like that's adding anything to the game. And the only unit that I really like from the roster that we used is the Ba of uh, Spearmen because it had an active ability where it gained, uh, I think, melee evasion but lost armor uh, the more the longer they're in a fight. I feel like things like that uh, introduce potential new strategic elements to using the unit, and that makes uh, the game a little bit more interesting in terms of unit diversity. Like when people complain about unit diversity, they're not saying that there is not a melee cavalry that does slightly more base damage and you know slightly less armor piercing damage. No, you're using the cavalry the same exact way you would use any melee cav. You just might compare their stats, be like, this one does slightly more damage for its value, so I will recruit this one all the time. Because it's not a choice. And and speaking of choice, I think Radius Mod also makes the design mistake of taking away player choice. Because you can get reformed so easily, because your characters level up so fast, and because they can gain all the skills on the skill tree, and you can build all the buildings because all the money is really good, and all the buildings produce excellent income, there is no trade-off. You don't have to make any decisions. You just build all of them, get all the reforms, pick up all the skills, and it, it doesn't feel like you're making any decisions. You know, you're just killing more armies, gaining more experience because the AI has more armies. Here they come, finally. We can have our machine gun troop murder them. Oh, speaking of these machine gun troop, they are absolutely killers uh, in the Radius mod. And the reason why they're killers is because the Radius mod decided to give them armor piercing damage. Uh, in the base game, they have a decent amount of base damage. I think 25-ish around that range. I might be mistaken, but a slow firing rate, long reload speed is their weakness. But what Radius mod probably doesn't realize is that in each of their ammo, which I think has been artificially bumped as well, exists like six or seven arrows, right? And each of those arrows deal that much damage, and the way their arrows are programmed is that to prevent... Right, you shut up. <laughs> he's telling them to be silent. Uh, um, he's telling the, the arrows home in onto the target that it initially targets. So it kind of tracks the enemy. It's like homing missile. So it's super accurate as a range unit, because the first arrow and like the fifth arrow are targeting the same unit. So you end up with these units that now have huge armor piercing damage, which means they just punch through units. And with insane amount of ammo and much faster firing rate too, I think it got buffed too. So now we have this basically machine gun army that's just impossible to kind of kill. I feel like they're just going to be incredible. And of course, Struggernauts are awesome. Uh, ammo pretty much, I feel like, got doubled compared to the base game. And now, you know, we, we get to enjoy them for a lot longer. They can beat any sort of infantry mob that tries to approach you. There are also some modification to their range where they change the range values and then the indicator is different. But as you can see, the fire jet don't reach the entire indicator range. I feel like the jet, you know, doesn't go all the way down, but it deals damage capable of going there. It only visually showed this far. I think that's also a result of them changing uh, the values here. So it looks a little bit weird. Looks like we're napalming people. We don't really have actual flanks, so we gotta march our units around. Oh, but they're losing to our cavalry. Oh yeah, and because any, no one can really charge us because, you know, you automatically have the suppression effect from repeating crossbowmen too. And now they match up pretty much the range of enemy, you know, range units as well, so we can trade fire with them too. I think they're just kind of the perfect range unit, assuming you don't need any sort of fire damage. Like if you need some sort of fire, they can't really put fire on their bow. Yeah, but aside from that, I, I think combat wise, there are units that you know you can do really well with in battles. Like my philosophy playing Total War game is that if you can bring range units, you bring the range unit. It's like bringing a gun to a knife fight. You take a lot less casualties and your army is much more prepared. Um, in the case of Three Kingdoms, siege weapons help a lot as well. Like, you know, our juggernauts probably kill stacks and stacks of infantry that 
you know, our melee line would otherwise have to deal with, or we have to use the cavalry to flank. And I also don't know why they alter the unit size uh, as much as they did. They increased the unit size of infantry, uh, kept them pretty much the same. And then for these, they increased it by a little bit as well. I think there is like a 20% increase on the cavalry and I think a 20% increase on the infantry as well. Range stayed the same and um, I don't know what the rationale behind that is. I guess they're trying to buff cavalry and infantry relative to range by giving them uh, you know, more health than in this case. Like perhaps that's true. Maybe that's a records mode thing as well. I, I recognize like the 121, the extra one person should be like the leader of the group or something like that. Anyhow, they outrange us so we can't do too much against them. That's the one annoying thing. Do I have my cavalry units out? Let's go finish them. And, and speaking of records mode, I, I think the mode, you know, supposed to be designed kind of like the traditional Total War experience. You get the bodyguards. Um, the thing is you end up not having any skills, which is also the traditional Total War experience, but for those of you who play Three Kingdoms, like a lot of the... Never mind, we're gonna kill them. We don't have to go. Um, a lot of the fun part of playing Total War, like uh, of collecting these unique characters, let's say, like we got Gunning, right? But there's no joy in getting Gunning because Gunning doesn't have Hell of Arrows anymore, right? So he's not this one-man killing machine, which obviously is more realistic, but then when you're playing a game, you know, it's not always about realism you know these these things are not realistic neither are these and uh these guys are also not realistic so theoretically these things existed repeating crossbowmen but they were super short range no punching power right because you're not winding up the coil as much on each shot so having no armor piercing damage makes sense they're not that accurate there should be super short range in this case and uh pretty much why are they not Alright. Go for it. Ah, oh, never mind. He got the message. But yeah, that was fun. Lots of arrows flying in and uh, lots of good damage. Because suppression by itself is really great and then you get the damage on top. They only shot 11 ammo, so in an offensive siege where they're behind walls, you can just imagine how much damage output these guys can do. It's just kind of insane thinking about it. Uh, just want to test them out one last time in Radius because we're not going to be playing it anymore. Alrighty. And now there's only one Naman faction. Now if we were going to continue the campaign, we would be farming them forever. Just trying to pick up those uniques that they now have. Um, but we're not going to do that. Um, continuing with our review of the Radius mod, uh, the building changes. I feel like there can be some more better modifications. I understand that they want to change the income so that you feel like you have a lot of money so you can afford a lot of units. Well, they also changed the upkeep of the units. So they buff the buildings and nerf the cost or, or buff or made it cheaper for you to hold units. So you end up with incomes like this, which makes it feel like you are not making any sort of decision when you're building things, right? Doesn't promote any sort of strategizing for how to build things. Like I can run high corruption and still make a ton of money. I don't have to worry about corruption. So the challenge of that is gone. And that's like the only anti-snowball mechanic in Three Kingdoms. And buildings like the grain storage, this this would be a perfect building for mods to tackle because this building you will never build. But there's there are ways to make this more interesting. Like I think even Evil Turbans deal better with this where they put some peasantry income on that. Like they decided to put industry income on the labor building, which just makes industry income better. It's like they're trying to make the strong things even stronger, even though that's, that's not really a attempt at balancing, right? Like you automatically go towards industry and commerce because the base value is so high for industry and also the multipliers are so high for commerce and they link very very nicely on the reform tree where you can kind of go after uh, the onyx dragon right here and then pick up two extra reforms here and you have like the bases or oh, the one extra here so basically like within one two three four five once you get these five reforms here 
you have the level four private workshop, level four state workshop, level four in, and you can build all those at a small city level. And that's the basis of most of your economy. And that's what usually you go for in the base game without mods. Now these buildings make more money than before, uh, much more money than before, uh, more than 20, I think closer to 25, 24% more on the state workshop. And then for the inn, I think the inn's less egregious. I think it's 250 to 80 more. So about 30, no, 20. Yeah, it would be 30, 30 something percent, 30 something percent extra in terms of the base income. And then private workshop, this one, they didn't change. This one, they kept the same. Uh, labor building, now they give you like an ideal fourth building because you end up with something like 300 extra more industry income and then 40% boost plus 80k population, which will undo any sort of population loss you will ever have from uh, negative public order. Um, I think they, speaking of public order, I think they also buff the income uh, of the tax collection. I think from like 340 to 420, they nerf the public order loss. So it's easier for you to hold on to these without worrying about public order. They didn't touch the grain store. This is something I think most mods should focus on, like making this building actually feasible. I think it's, it's going to be key. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much all I have to say for the buildings. They didn't change any of the multiplier buildings, but they changed a lot of the base income buildings. And now it's it's just like you want to build all three of these. You want to build the inn. You could go land development. And then for your like six building, if you don't care about public order, you just go for a tax collection, leave an army behind to farm the rebels. Or you don't go for this, build a marketplace if you have other sources of commerce. If you don't have other sources of commerce, did they change this? Uh, they changed this a little bit. Yeah, they, they took away the palace, which gives 500 uh, base peasantry. That's no longer the case. They changed it to a pretty much a copy of this building. Like, why would I? Huh. Uh, yeah, now these two are like the same. Different values, sure, but they, they function the same exact way. Whereas it wasn't the case before. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff you can nitpick. I think that's pretty much from the building perspective. It just makes it a little bit too easy and you don't have to think about what buildings you want to place. Like I would just want all three base income in all my commanderies because the value is so inflated. I'll make the most money that way. And then for diplomacy, I don't think there's any major changes. I think the values are still the same in the base game. I don't think they change anything there. The spy, obviously they change stuff in terms of the discredited faction, discredited characters. This is changed from minus 10 to minus 15. This is changed from minus 30 to minus 28, which for the life of me, I don't understand why it changed those two points. Like, yeah, I don't understand why it's minus 28. That just seems like a weird number to change it to. Um, do I like the minus 15? I don't like the part where when they come back, they mess up your satisfaction, but I do like the fact that you have a much easier time stealing characters. Now, it's not like it's hard to steal characters from before because minus 10 is still substantial. Uh, you can pretty much do the works of three spies with two spies, technically, um, but it's not really like when you're talking about discredited factions, it's not about how many spies you have here. It's more like how many low satisfaction characters he has in his court because every single one of them can be you know, used. So basically how many times you have to use discredited faction to get the same effect. You pretty much save about one third um, of the effort there. Um, but I don't know if it's because we're playing as Shurxia, which means like a lot of faction, a lot of characters don't like coming to our faction after they become dissatisfied because so far a lot of people have reached zero, but none of them really came to us. Uh, that might just because uh, Shurxia is kind of far out of the map so they don't come here. That kind of makes sense. Oh, can we properly wipe them out? No, we can't. All right, as the last act of our campaign here. Oh, and I also want to share what we're going to do after this for Three Kingdoms, because I, as many of you probably know, this is going to be my last daily upload uh, Three Kingdoms series, as Humankind is coming out very soon. Yeah, get rid of all your infantry and siege weapons, leave the cavalry, and we'll go super fast, and we can kill them. Do it, you 
Now Wuzugul's faction is gone. Okay, and that's gonna be it for the campaign. Uh, moving forward, what we're gonna do... How close are we? Now we're so far away, even if I rush the buildings I can't get enough points. That's just sad. I'm 56 points away. Divide that by 4. 14 upgrades of different buildings to get there. Oh, that's way too much. Yep, and, and that's only to Duke. That's not even to King. 600, I can't even imagine what the number is for King. A thousand? Like That's also something I don't understand. Why, why change this value? Like, they made it so that your court is like double what it is. And they gave you the prime minister one rank earlier with the intention saying that you can enjoy prime ministers earlier and I guess for longer. But then, like, what about imperial court? Like, you're never going to get there. It, it's taking way too long. Uh, anyhow, um, going forward, uh, we're not going to be doing any campaigning for Total War Three Kingdoms this month. I'm going to take a break from doing campaigns and then once we go to next month I'm going to do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday upload schedule and we will return to a campaign of some sorts. Uh, probably still going to use some mods, we're probably going to go back to some, uh, we're going to go back to romance mode for sure and we're probably going to go back to a, a more character focused mod whether that's going to be uh, Wu Kinasans or the TPU mod. Uh, which I heard, or TUP, TUP, right, TUP, which I heard has like 500 unique characters. Sounds pretty insane, but um, I'll take a look at it and uh, basically do another sort of mod showcase campaign. Um, this doesn't mean there's not going to be any Three Kingdom content on the channel. We'll still be doing the weekly early game guides. We're moving into Yellow Turbans, and we are also going to be doing uh, some sort of guide video on every Saturday. Uh, my plan is to do Diplomacy this week and maybe Espionage the week after and then probably shift to non character backgrounds which hopefully I can find all of them by then. It's going to be a lot of work because we got to find the level 1, level 3, and level 6 title background bonuses for all the characters and there are just a ton of them so uh, wish me luck and hopefully I can get those out during either this month or next month. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this one. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.